team. Team, 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 team. I even love saying the word team. This is the original IT crowd pilot. And this is the bizarre American knockoff that never left the basement. Team. Team, 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 team. I even love saying the word team. If it weren't for the entire episode being leaked, we wouldn't have ever had the chance to see it. No one involved seems to want anything to do with it, and after watching it, we understand why. Well, I'm the head of this department. I thought I was. Well, one of us is. <laughs> it's certainly not her. But while it may have failed on every conceivable level, there's still something to be learned from that time America tried to remake the IT crowd. I am the head of this department. I thought I was. <laughs> but it's one of us. Certainly not her. If you enjoy videos like this one, then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to Nerdstalgic so you don't miss out on whatever we put out next. The original IT crowd ran from 2006 to 2010, with a final special episode coming out in 2013. It was smart and more than a little awkward. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> Though many of the jokes have aged like yesterday's jam, the whole show really got by on the strength and chemistry of its cast. We, we, we need to stay calm. We do not want to go in there half-cocked. <laughs> By the time it ended its run, the beloved British sitcom about geeks and IT had attracted millions of viewers and helped cement many of its actors as huge stars. Chris O'Dowd and Richard Iowati would both go on to become household names in the UK, and the show even featured the likes of Noel Fielding and Matt Berry. But the IT crowd's legacy isn't flawless, and it remains tethered to one of the worst attempts at Americanizing a British TV show to date. It's no secret that Americans love to remake British television. From Shameless to Whose Line to The Office, sometimes the adaptation process works out for the better. In 2007, it seemed like the IT crowd was going to be added to that list of successes when NBC ordered an entire season before even seeing a finished pilot. But any enthusiasm for the project was short-lived. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous. It would be an understatement to say the Hollywood makeover missed the mark here. According to the THR report at the time, the show didn't quite spark at NBC. So the executives canceled the adaptation after the completion of the pilot episode, even though it had something most American remakes don't have. It's not uncommon for British show creators to work closely with their American counterparts when Hollywood decides to adapt a foreign story. What is uncommon is for a member of the original cast to return. Richard Iowati as Maurice Moss. What? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, don't worry, that's why I always make two cups of tea. Despite his status as a second lead, Iowati had become a sort of poster boy for the show at large. Iowati was, indisputably, the only man for the role. He proved as much by giving us the exact same performance, right down to the annotation in his sentences. It's honestly uncanny. What? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, don't worry, that's why I always make two cups of tea. <laughs> but the bemusing comic stylings of one man were not enough to save the American IT crowd pilot. It was doomed from the start. That perfectly repeated performance is just the most entertaining symptom of a larger problem. The pilot is essentially just a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the IT crowd's first episode. The Office famously used this method of painstakingly recreating the show they're adapting. In that instance, the American version obviously went on to be hugely popular, which is probably why NBC wanted to reproduce the formula. But the IT crowd proved to be a different beast that couldn't be wrangled quite as easily. Let's see what we have here. Stand upright. Now I can't read it. <laughs> the American pilot is so strange in that it's both too similar and too different from the British show. There are echoes of iconic jokes and shots from the original, but they're done without the timing or consideration that made them work in the first place. Whether it's the pan from the photo of Rainholm to the actual Rainholm making the same face, or the way Jen gingerly steps out of the elevator into the basement, the moments in the American pilot just don't hit as hard. I've got lots of experience with the whole computer thing. You know, um, the computer screen, the keyboard. Even the sets are practically mirror images of each other, but the ones in the American pilot feel more like a stage. The basement especially looks much cheaper and is generally unbelievable as an actual workspace for our titular IT crowd. Plenty of dialogue is lifted word for word from the original, though the cast members in the American pilot deliver it in painfully unfunny ways. There will be some piece of evidence that will prove without any shadow of a doubt that you don't know anything about computers. What are you doing? 
plugging in your computer. There will be some piece of evidence that will prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that you do not know anything about computers. What are you doing? Plugging in your computer. Every time a regurgitated line gets butchered, the audience is reminded that these actors were never meant to say them in the first place. The new cast is unfortunately and frustratingly weak when compared to the actors in the original show, and the lead role was perhaps the biggest misstep. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> okay, well, the button on the side, is it glowing? Yeah, we're gonna need to turn it on. The American pilot features a pre-community Joel McHale as a replacement for Chris O'Dowd's Roy. Why NBC thought casting a self-assured Ryan Seacrest type as Roy was a good idea will forever remain a mystery. It only served to harden the character's soft edges and highlight his worst personality traits. When McHale is letting the phone ring off the hook, complaining about his love life, or putting Moss in a headlock, he doesn't come off as a disaffected nerd like O'Dowd. Rather, Roy carries himself as an egotistical jerk, which makes him a lot less likable right off the bat. It's just gonna be a couple more minutes. <laughs> Tacos? Yummy! All right. Overall, the American IT crowd suffers from a deep misunderstanding of both its source material and the nature of adaptation. While the premise and sense of humor of The Office was easily translatable for an American audience, the IT crowd is wrapped tightly around its British roots. The way the show's jokes are written, as well as the absurdity of the characters, are unavoidably British. They just don't work with the sensibilities of American actors. These are key components that made for a much more difficult translation. And that's also the reason why we've seen three more failed American reboots since the original pilot in 2007. Even when the original creator is involved, the IT crowd just can't get off the ground in the States. Hello, security. Everyone on floor four is fired. Please escort them from the premises and do it as a team. Remember, you're a team, and if you can't work as a team, you're fired too. And it should be noted that Hollywood wasn't alone in trying to muscle in on the magic. There's an equally weird German remake that ran for six episodes before being unceremoniously canceled in 2008. Hello, IT. Haben Sie schon mit Aus- und Einschalten probiert? Clearly, something about the IT crowd has struck a chord with audiences and studio executives across cultural lines and even language barriers. It's a remarkably intimate show full of hilarious characters with palpable chemistry. But we've now seen what happens when someone tries to replicate it. The American IT crowd pilot is a testament to Hollywood hubris. After finding massive success with one British adaptation in The Office, NBC wanted a repeat. So that's what they did. They repeated the show shot for shot, without any thought towards creative vision. And they suffer the consequences for it. Maybe Hollywood hasn't learned its lesson, but we can. We can leave this mess behind with a fuller understanding of how difficult it is to bring British TV to American audiences, and a greater appreciation for the wit and charm of the original IT crowd. I'm not very good at lying. I'm very good at lying! I thought you were on the phone. Yeah, I am. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> and well, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for sticking with us all the way to the end. As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgic if you want to stay up to date with all our latest releases.